Halo Infinite graphics, Zeta Halo possibilities, Infinite releasing as an incomplete game, how Cortana and Fireteam Osiris can be tied into Halo Infinite, the lack of a classic Magnum and shotgun, and so much more being discussed in this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, give you another commentary about some Halo. Today we're going to be answering some of your questions you left me when it comes to what is your thoughts on Halo Infinite. As I went on to my community page here on my channel, if you want to catch those community posts as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe to the channel guys. So I posted on my community page and I asked this, with the dust settling after all the Halo Infinite news, what are you most excited and or worried about for Halo Infinite. So this one I picked out some of the ones I liked a lot that I think would be a good topic to discuss as well as the most liked comments on that thread as well. And trust me, there are some excellent questions and concerns being brought up in this video. So let's get right into it. Elden One says, I'm most excited for this game to finally be set on Zeta Halo. Hopefully with the flood returning and the callback on the vastness of CE's map design, we could finally be able to have the classic Halo feel again. However, I'm worried about the lackluster graphics pushing people away from wanting to experience this game. I believe that graphics should never be before gameplay or story, but with this being the flagship game for the Xbox Series X, I can see why people would be disappointed. Some excellent points there, and yes, I totally agree that I'm glad to see that they're kind of pulling a lot of influences from Combat Evolved when it comes to Halo Infinite. They've said strictly that CE is a major influence on this game as a whole and it seems like they're kind of utilizing that same uh, format of kind of like an open-ended kind of experience that you want to have when it comes to experiencing your multi or your single player missions I should say uh, very similar to what that towards the end of the mission Halo where you got a chance to choose the three different life pods of which Marines you want to save first but depending on which ones you do in what order it all kind of ends up the same, but you still get to choose and have that option, which I think is really great. And uh, we saw that with the most recent gameplay demo of Halo Infinite as well. So you will be able to have that opportunity to backtrack as well. So the world would be opening up as you explore throughout the game and play more. And yes, I totally understand about the graphics. Honestly, I think it's just more about the lighting, if anything. So I think I honestly like the uh, textures, the polygon count, and just the way the characters look, I think is fine. Uh, all the characters are modeled very nicely. The textures look great. I think just the lighting makes everything look really flat. Uh, it's not really as detailed. Obviously, the demo that we saw was on PC, but there was no RTX uh, lighting, which would greatly improve the lighting system as well, to the point where you're going to want to sacrifice whatever performance you can get to have the RTX on. Trust me, it's going to look amazing. Uh, if you guys have ever seen RTX Minecraft, it's a complete game changer of a visual overhaul just by changing the lighting so I assume that's kind of what the same thing we're having here as Halo Infinite has to use a dynamic lighting system as there is a day and night cycle with this game as well so having all your lighting that's being generated in real time it's very intensive on a system uh, with this delay that we know that's happening until 2021 either let's say in spring or in fall uh, we definitely will be seeing improvements as, in that as that was the, probably the biggest complaint when we saw from the whole thing because you know from what's gameplay wise i think everyone can agree that it looked fun the idea of a semi-open world open and expansive world of halo does look great and i'm definitely excited for it aiden horrocks if i pronounced that name correctly it says i love how this game is set on zeta halo and being open world to be honest i'm super hyped for this game and i think it'll succeed my biggest worry is that the game will be finished be at launch because of the challenges this year, I'm afraid we'll get an incomplete package. I totally agree. The setting of Zeta Halo is such a huge possibility of storytelling that you can spend like four games worth of content just di di diving deep into what Zeta Halo has for its lore. It's insane. And I think it's a, for a place like Halo Infinite to take place on for that 10-year plan. Zeta Halo is the place to do it. I think it's an awesome idea. Uh, I do have the same worries as well as you, though, talking about how uh, with the challenges that we're having this year of not receiving a full game. We did hear those leaked rumors that they thought about maybe releasing just the campaign or just the multiplayer parts of the game, but then re backtracking and going, you know what? That's not the best way to release the game. And I agree. Uh, you want to release a full multiplayer suite of modes and, uh, and the experiences you can offer there. 
as well as a full campaign with a good story that people can kind of jump in and play and have fun with. And with this delay, I would assume that they probably give them more time to work on these certain things. Uh, I still think there probably will be things that get left on the cutting room floor or put added in later on. Uh, as long as there's a good solid 4v4 Slayer, personally, I'll be happy. But I understand how people you know, have their own preferences when it comes to Halo. That's what makes this game and franchise so great. That there's so many different ways to experience the game and enjoy it. That if you miss out this community section of it, it's a big deal. And that's what... 343 and Microsoft luckily recognize, so they're not gonna be pushing out a product that's not finished. HGL says, how do you feel about the Bulldog and Sidekick replacing the original designs? I feel it's the Halo 5 Spanker all over again, and I hate it. I'm kind of there with you. I think it's the Magnum and this the shotgun. It's gonna be, we're gonna be wanting that back eventually. Will it be added in the game eventually? I think so. There's gonna be enough community pushback and rage and angry tweets about the whole thing about how the magnum's not back how the classic shotgun's not back uh over the course of 10 years i think that will be added into the game when i don't know i would assume probably within the first year uh because those are some iconic weapons and i just find it so odd that for a game that's pulling so much influence from combat evolved to not have your shotgun and magnum from combat evolved i feel is a big change of it just I, I don't understand it. I really don't. I think it's a big mess up right there. I do expect them to come back much like the Spanker did, but it's just kind of like, did we not learn from the Spanker that we want that design? Like a lot of people, when they think of Halo, they think of using that Magnum or battle rifle as like your main gun. I just don't understand this decision. Uh, though I, I do suspect it coming in soon or later, whatever, probably in a season pass or something like that. Maybe it's designed to be in a season pass, you know, months after the release to kind of get people to hop in and back in and play, which certainly would do that. Soren Taylor asks Q&A, why are people angry about the graphics? Other than the grass and the cloud popping, I don't see an issue. And Soren, I can see where you're coming from on that one too. Uh, like, I think the game actually looks fine. Uh, obviously with like popping textures, like the geometry, the popping grass that we saw in the beginning, uh, the popping geometry that we saw when the Warhog goes for that jump, that's pretty bad. The popping clouds, uh, that stuff definitely needs to be cleaned up before the game's release. And uh, that's not the best thing to show when you're like your flagship game that's meant to sell the console is having those kind of issues. It just really takes you out of the moment. I'm glad that 343 is taking the time to work on that, especially. Uh, this, that stuff is very immersion breaking. And uh, obviously with this game being an open world, a really expansive story and things like that, you need to have that immersion to make you feel like you're a super soldier on a halo ring defeating the evil enemies of the galaxy so generally i think when people are mentioning graphics i think what they're really talking about is the lighting and the pop-in textures is really what it is because i think uh, things like the modeling and the textures on items is just it looks good to me it's just the, the lighting not so much i think also when it comes to graphics we got a little bit of a letdown because of how good the uh you know announcement trailer looked how good the Discover Hope trailer looked, and we thought we were gonna be kind of experiencing that same level of quality when it comes to the graphics in gameplay. But even with like your in-engine, quote unquote, uh, cinematics, they always, you know, beef them up a little bit than what you would actually see in the gameplay as well. Uh, because you, normally you need to have higher res textures when you're having such close range images on things. I'm not being an apologist over here, I'm just saying that we you know, might have had our expectations a little too high because what we saw previously were trailers, we finally saw gameplay and we're like, this doesn't look much like the trailers that we saw before. The Tank Within has a very, very accurate statement. I want to see vehicles. And I would assume with your name being The Tank Within, that uh, you probably want to see some vehicles, right? <laughs> uh, me too. We saw the Phantom and we saw the Warhog and that's about it. Yeah, kind of surprising on that one really. Uh, even with the reveal of the Halo 5 uh, campaign trailer, we even got a chance to see at least a Phaeton, like a new vehicle or something like that. They kind of go like, whoa, it's super cool. What are we going to see then, you know? But uh, we only got the chance to see vehicles that we already know that would be expected to be in the game, you know? I'd absolutely love to see the Falcon return in Halo Infinite. That would be, that's the vehicle I want back. Cause that thing is like an airborne tank. It's so cool. I love the teamwork aspect of it as well. And it's just 
It's awesome. Like, I think that's a vehicle. That's the number one vehicle that needs to return in Halo Infinite for sure. Jeff Fawcett says, I'm worried about the 10 year live service model might affect the ability to replay the vanilla campaign experience years later. That's a pretty genuine concern as well, as it, most of the times when people play the campaign, it's one time through, they never touch it again. So, but it seems like uh, with Halo Infinite, they're gonna try to find somebody to bring some replayability to it or give you a reason why you wanna go back to previous areas that you were. Um, I just also really, I really hope to see that that there was going to be like some kind of maybe like updates that come with the campaign that make you want to jump in and play maybe there'll be some kind of special event that happens for like a couple weeks that makes you want to jump in and do it going with the game as a platform does kind of leave itself with abilities to add in more content and with the 10 year plan you have to assume that they're going to be adding in more campaign content throughout the years more areas to to explore more stories to tell and things like that uh so be using infinite as a platform would really help with that ability to bring more of that content and so you don't have to wait three years for a, a new campaign you might have to wait maybe just one year kind of like what destiny 2 does with about every year they have one big dlc that has like new campaign missions new stories and things like that i would have a feeling we have a similar cadence when it comes to halo infinite tape 10 snoofler if that's how you pronounce your name uh, he says, I bet they will use the live service excuse to have no content at launch. As well, I am worried about the teen rating and no flood. So you inspired my ass. I do know 3 for 3 has been kind of saying specifically using Halo Infinite as a platform. They've been kind of straying away from the live service kind of model. So they're not looking to be like Destiny 2, but they're looking to make Infinite be like a platform like we mentioned in the previous question about how it make it easier for content to be added into the game and much more um, necessarily alive, but much more uh, active. And I don't know if they're going to be using that excuse as a reason why that certain aspect of the game are not going to be in there. I'm pretty sure 343 has a, you know, cannot miss checklist when it comes to Halo Infinite. And I'm pretty sure after the you know, learnings of the pad in Halo 4, MCC, and Halo 5, uh, that they know that people need they have these certain aspects of the game in on um, launch so then it could be a successful Halo game. That's why they're delaying it till 2021. And yes, a T rating does kind of bother me a little bit, though I, if I do believe the Waking the Nightmare DLC for uh, Halo Wars 2 had the flood and that was rated T, obviously doing it in an RTS with lower graphics and a little bit more of a um, cartoony-ish art style, I'd say, with uh, Halo Wars 2. Not to like, not saying that it wasn't like, you know, gritty or realistic or anything, but um, I think that's also, now I do know that Bungie mentioned previously that the reason why uh, CE in Halo 2 and Halo 3 were all labeled as M was because of the flood and how, you know, watching people morph into these like zombies was a little too graphic for a T rating and having this game being rated T would be you know kind of concerning though i do think there is a way to where you can have the flood be in the game and also have it be a t rating uh, honestly i think also the there's been desensitization when it comes to video games as a whole uh, back then if your game just shot bullets pretty much you're gonna get an m rating and or had any form of blood or anything like that nowadays so i think it'd be an interesting way to how to go about how to go about doing that uh, i think a t rating might be the most uh, accessible rating for uh halo infinite as well to try to get to a bigger audience you know it's kind of like when you see like really popular movies and they go with a pg-13 rating you're like oh dude pg-13 but you know some movies are really good pg-13 movies think of infinity war that was pretty damn good movie, and that's PG-13. Tommy the Sparta says, I'm extremely excited for the story and to see Chief go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eshram. What do you think happened to the rest of Blue Team and Fire Team Osiris? And how do you think they will work Cortana into the story? Now, I do know that we're going to have like kind of a bit of a prequel happen later this fall with the uh, Shadows of Reach book that's going to be coming out with Master Chief, John 117, again with Blue Team on Reach doing whatever mission it takes. So I'm sure we'll probably have some loose ends tied up in that book as well. Dealing with Osiris and Cortana, that is just a... Uh... Uh, that's there's multiple ways you can go about doing it. you can tie it up in a comic you can tie it up in a book 
Uh, you can save it for later, which I think which maybe it's something that they might do. Uh, no mention of Cortana whatsoever with the gameplay demo, though we do, do know that she's going to be in the game because obviously with the Cortana new Cortana chip that you have that we found in the Discover Hope trailer, and also you know Chief activating the chip with like the. I don't know, the command center station in uh, Halo Ring or whatever. So we do know that Cortana's gonna be at least in the game. To what extent, we don't know. Though I would still expect to see some form of a tie-up or at least a lead into trying to finish up that created story, that line that they said they left off. But the, you know, they do mean to leave Halo Infinite as a good starting point in the franchise for anybody to come into the game, which would be really good to do because I feel like 3 for 3 has relied too much on external media like books and comics and TV shows and movies and shorts and everything else like that uh, i do know like george lucas had a very similar uh, concept when it comes to the star wars uh series as well where what happens in the movies happens in the movies whatever's in the books is kind of external ideas that are playing around with fun not necessarily canon but not necessarily not canon kind of things and that's kind of how I like to look at these kind of book stories as well. Obviously they are canon and stuff like that, which helps kind of get that connectivity, which is really awesome with the games and the comics and books and external media as a whole. Though when you try to tie them all together, it can get really messy as we saw with Halo 5. But if you guys like these Q&A videos, please make sure to tap that like button that lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below guys, if you want to catch one of these later on as well. Big shout outs to Paradise Halo and Dinoshawn sent me this shirt. It's pretty awesome. Thank you guys very much. Uh, check out the link in the description down below for their channel. Definitely guys want to check out that stuff for sure. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.